Okay, um, so uh, let us try to solve the problem that I gave in the last class. So let us read the problem first. For a 500 horsepower, 415 volt line to line, wound rotor induction machine, uh, the rated sleep is 3%. Okay, and the sleep at maximum torque is 12%. I, I you must understand that when the rotor circuit is shorted this uh, probably I implied and I didn't mention it. So let me uh, let me mention it now that this is when the rotor rotor circuit is uh, shorted right rotor because rotor in the rotor induction machine has secondary side uh, terminals available when the secondary side terminals are shorted and if it is run like a uh, squirrel cage machine, uh, then the rated sleep is 3% and the sleep at maximum torque is 12%. <coughs> Ignore all other resistances, means stator resistances and reactances, means stator reactance, magnetizing reactance, etc. Uh, for simple analysis of this problem, uh, except the rotor resistance and the uh, rotor reactance. OK, uh, this is a four pole 50 hertz machine and it is used in the sleep power recovery drive. It is in the uh, in the structure of a sleep power recovery uh, drive. Drive means it is supposed to vary the speed and give the torque of the that is demanded by the load. <coughs> the firing angle alpha. So uh, we have seen that the, uh, the the structure of this drive. Uh, the structure of the drive is that secondary side we put a diode rectifier and then it is followed by one current source inverter uh, where the power is uh, taken uh, from the DC side and fed to the line side. So the effective power, some power is entering uh, through the stator and some power is returning uh, back through the rotor, right? So effective power that they that the drive takes is the uh, algebraic sum of this. That means power entering the stator minus the power leaving the rotor, right? So that will be the power <coughs> that it will be effectively taking. So objective of this kind of scheme is that uh, we don't lose anything in the rotor circuit unnecessarily. Otherwise, to vary the speed, we have to change the uh, we have to add some resistance in the rotor circuit and vary the speed, right? Uh, as per our torque speed characteristics. So, uh, so, so find the firing angle alpha for running the rotor at 500 rpm. There are three conditions given: 500 rpm, 1000 rpm, and 1200 rpm, right? Uh, and I didn't mention, but uh, it is implied that uh, while running this, let us assume that. It is operating at the rated sleep, <coughs> rated torque, rated torque of the machine, rated torque or full load torque of the machine. It is operating at that. And you know that in order to uh, balance these things, uh, uh, two turns ratios are sometimes considered. Uh, one turn ratio, turns ratio is N1. Uh, that turns ratio is defined as the uh, rotor turns. Uh, uh, divided by the stator number of turns, that is the turn turns ratio N1. And the other turns ratio is the is a transformer uh, which is connected in the rotor side uh, rotor side circuitry uh, where the power is fed back. So you can see that thing. This N2 and N1, you can see that uh, N2 is the uh, this thing. So here um, N2 will be defined as the uh, as the converter side uh, number of turns, 
divided by the grid side number of turns. Grid is the power line. So converter side number of turns. Uh, that means the side where the thyristor converter is there, which is acting as a current source inverter. Uh, you can see that ID is the current in the current source inverter. Uh, so uh, I had asked the question that what should be the firing angle of this thyristor such that the required amount of voltage can be generated in the uh, in the DC side, uh, DC side of the uh, of the inverter, and that DC side voltage once it is generated, it will get reflected to the rotor side of the motor, right? Uh, so that is the objective and that is what uh, we intended to do uh, in order to vary the speed of the machine at rated torque. The torque we are not changing. You can change the torque also. It is not a constraint. But uh, this problem, we let us see that, uh, let us say that uh, the torque is not changed. Okay. So is that problem clear? It is an undotor induction machine. Its rated slip is 3%. And the slip at maximum torque is 12% under the condition that rotor circuit is, uh, is shorted, rotor terminals are shorted. Suppose this is the core characteristics of the machine. The machine, uh, when uh, nothing uh, external is given, then how it behaves, nothing external is injected from the rotor side, uh, then uh, its core characteristic shows that this rated slip is 3% and the and the maximum torque at which the um, uh, maximum the uh, the slip at which maximum torque occurs is 12 percent so uh, with this uh, clarity uh, let us try to solve the problem so um, what is the essence of the problem essence of the problem is to look at the torque speed characteristics and understand Understand that we are trying to generate different different characteristics. Uh, the peak torque is always the same. Peak torque is always the same. We are essentially trying to generate different different kind of characteristics. Like that, we are trying to generate uh, by adding uh, in conceptual way. We are adding some. Uh, some uh, so this is the this is the top load torque level. We are going from different different uh, slips, and in the conceptual level, we are just adding rotor resistance. It is R external one, external one. It may be another R external two, like that. It is a conceptual addition. Actually, uh, we'll be uh, we'll be injecting voltage, and the voltage and the resistance relationship is V is equal to I into R external right i rotor into r external that is the conceptual uh, thing uh, that will be uh, that will be doing right so if we know the r external i is already known i is the uh, is the current in the rotor circuit and the current in the rotor circuit is never changed because we are changing the slip and we are changing the rotor resistance in such a way that r by s ratio is unchanged so therefore the current in the machine is unchanged uh, which also satisfies the as long as the torque is constant as long as the torque is constant the current in the machine we have said that in this case the torque is constant that's why the straight line is unchanged this is the load torque this is the load torque this is the developed torque this is the omega omega rotor so this is not changed and therefore it will be <coughs> uh, it will not have the any change in the current and this current is nothing but i rotor current I rotor side current and this is the voltage of V rotor side voltage. <coughs> so uh, with this thing, let us try to numerically solve this problem. So first thing is that the machine rating is 500 HP, which means it is 500 HP is corresponding to 500 into 746 watt is equal to 373 watt okay so this machine this is the input side input side power of the machine <clears throat> so power 
per phase because it's a three phase machine power phase phase divided by three this divided by three if i do it then i will get one two four three 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 watt okay then uh, <coughs> line to line voltage is 415 415 volt uh, v line to line is equal to 415 volt this is the rms rms so which means the phase voltage uh, v phase is equal to divided by root 3 and that is 239.6 volt we are trying to get an equivalent circuit <coughs> of the machine where uh, stator side resistances and reactances are ignored and the and the magnetizing inductance is in ignored so now let us try to understand uh, how do we use the uh, this thing you remember that we have earlier uh, learned in the uh, second year classes that uh, s max which is nothing but defined as the torque at which uh, uh, sorry the slip at which maximum torque occurs is given by the condition that S max is equal to R2 by H2. This is the uh, relationship it happens at, at that point R2 by H2 and you can see, easily see how it happens. It is easily saved. You can see the expression of the torque and you can easily see that the maximum thing happens uh, when um, if you remember that when the impedance uh, impedances are equal from maximum uh, power transfer theorem. Uh, so you, it becomes that R2 by S max has to be equal to X2. Then uh, maximum power transfer theorem applying my get that relationship, and this is given as point point one two, right? <clears throat> it is given as point one two. So we can say that X2 X2 is more X2 is equal to uh, R2 by zero point one two is equal to eight. 0.33 okay so <clears throat> this is the x2 relationship i get um, uh, then uh, another condition is slip uh, maximum at maximum torque at rated torque not maximum torque at rated torque torque um, uh, we know that slip uh, we call call it uh, slip full load or slip rated is equal to 0, uh, point, uh, point 0.03. Uh, so therefore, uh, we say that R2 by S is equal to uh, R2 by S is this value is how much at, at that uh, at the slip uh, R2 by S is equal to uh, 3.33.33 uh, R2 right so we can now have uh, the equivalent circuit equivalent circuit is what if rotor side equivalent circuit is this plus this uh, this is r2 by s i am talking about the condition when it is developing the full load torque and j x2 let me not use uh, dash because why i am not using dash is that we always understand that uh, we are uh, we, had, we have we have been given the number that n2 n1 the trans ratio is equal to one so there is no change in the uh, uh, there is no difference between r2 and r2 dash because number of trans is equal to <coughs> one and therefore the the voltage is here uh, is equal to the phase voltage phase voltage is v phase because again the trans ratio is equal to one so I can say that rotor side voltage is same as this phase voltage uh, uh, only by um, scaling it with uh, after uh, scaling it with uh, slip. So this is 239.6. There's no difference coming out because of number of trans. Otherwise, number of trans should have been used, but there is no difference. So it is uh, taken from the stator side and uh, all the resistances reflected to the stator side are uh, same as the rotor side resistances only the we know that uh, the slip will be coming as a factor and uh, after taking that all of them can be taken in terms of uh, uh, r2 because this has also been converted in terms of r2 so 
uh, first of all, we can see what is the I'm doing my way. Uh, what is the tan phi? Tan phi is uh, power tan phi because I want to know the power factor of this thing. Tan phi is equal to x2 by um, x2 by r2 by r2 by sfl uh, sfl. So from that we get phi is equal to if I do it, I will get phi is equal to uh, 14 degrees. So that is the uh, angle. Uh, phase angle between voltage and current. This is the current in the rotor. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, discriminating because stator current and rotor current are assumed to be same here. We have ignored this part. And uh, so this is the current in the rotor file um, I2. Let, let us say I2, I2. Let me do it I2. Let us say I2 is the current in the rotor coil. And Therefore, how much is the value of I, I2? So we can use the power equation and find out the value of I2. What is that? V phase into I2 into cos of 14 degree must be equal to that power. What is that power? 1, 2, 4, 3, 3, 3. 1, 2, 4, 3, 3, 3. So I2 is equal to then uh, 1, 2, 4, 3, 3, 3 uh, divided by uh, 239.6 into cos uh, 14 degree. Into cos 14 degree is how much? Uh, into 0, 0. 97. So this comes out to be 1, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 4, 3, 3, 3 divided by 239.6 divided by 0.97 is equal to 535 ampere approximately. <clears throat> so this is the rotor current. This is the rotor current in the thing. And from uh, so now comes our finding out how much uh, should be the equivalent additional resistance such that this ratio, as long as this ratio is unchanged, there is no change in current and there is no change in torque. The machine doesn't realize it, right? So we have known that R2 by S FL, if this ratio is unchanged, even after external resistance injection, after external resistance injection, if I do, then this will be R2 plus R external 1 by the new slip. The new slip, let us say, S1. So let us say, what is the new slip? Uh, there are various cases given. Let me calculate for omega rotor is equal to 1200 RPM. That is one of the condition given. So one of the, when omega rotor is equal to 1200 RPM, what is the S1 corresponding this? That is 1500 minus 1200 divided by 1500. So it is uh, 300 by this. So one fifth. So it is 0 0.0.2. That is the slip. Okay. So what should be then uh, this thing? So in order to do that, first we need to find out uh, one unknown is there R2. So now we can find out what is R2 because what is that? Uh, we have found out the magnitude of the current. So magnitude of the current is, we know, I, this magnitude is nothing but V phase divided by uh, R2 by S, that is R2 by S FL square plus X2 square, which is nothing but 239.6 volts uh, divided by Mm, uh, square root of 33.33 because uh, we have seen that SFL is equal to 0 0.02. So this square plus an X is equal to some 8 point something. What was that? Uh, 8.33 R2. You have seen that 8.33 R2. So let us put 8.33 square divided by R2. So uh, and this must be this is this has already been decided that it is 535 ampere 
so r2 is equal to then 239.6 divided by 535 divided by square root of 33.33 square plus 8.33 square right so this is the resistance r2 239.6 divided by 535 divided by square root of 33.33 square plus 8.33 square equal to uh, equal to 13 uh, 13 milli ohm so we are getting r2 is equal to 13 milli ohm so using that i now go for this equation i now take this equation i need to find out what is s1 right so s1 uh, so not s1 s1 is known s1 is i have already found out uh, i need to find out what is r external so r external is equal to s1 into r2 by sfl minus r2 right so r external one is equal to S1 into R2 by S full load uh, minus R2. So how much is this? This is equal to 0 0.2 uh, divided by 0 0.03 into uh, 0.013 minus 0 0.013. Right. So, how much is this? 0.2 by 0 0.03 into 0 0.013 minus 0 0.013. <coughs> so, it is 73.6 milli ohm. Right. Now we have got it. Now we know that. Uh, what should be the injected voltage per phase at least? Uh, injected voltage per phase has to be uh, how much? How much it would be? V external 1, that means the condition when omega rotor, this is what omega rotor is equal to 1200 RPM to run it, and T is equal to TFL, this condition we are running it, full load torque we are running it. So this is external, this is the external voltage per <coughs> phase to be more clear and accurate. <coughs> so this is how much? This is uh, point I into R, 73.6 milli ohm into 535 ampere. The current is same, current is not changing. Okay, the torque is unchanged, current is unchanged, right? Uh, <coughs> current is unchanged. So we are changing the slip by equivalent change of resistance, which is activated by injecting a voltage, which has to be in phase with the actual current in the machine. Uh, that is 535 ampere current. Whatever that current, in phase with that current, we have to inject a voltage. That's why you remember that we have used a diode rectifier, because diode rectifier relate, uh, relationship between uh, voltage and current becomes uh, in phase, though diode rectifier will actually uh, inject some harmonics, but in this analysis, we are only considering fundamental component of the thing. So we are doing it the diode rectifier, but assuming that it's a such a special kind of diode rectifier which can inject a sinusoidal current, but actually the diode rectifier would inject a uh, uh, a uh, uh, quasi square wave current, uh, meaning that it will be. 120 degree conduction and rest of the time it will be zero and then negative uh, 120 degree conduction. <clears throat> so this 535 ampere and this will be the voltage will be uh, into 535. So it is 39.41 volt I have to inject per phase. 39.41 volt I have to inject. So let's see the concept circuit one more time. This is the rotor circuit. 
and I'm just drawing from the rotor circuit perspective. A diode rectifier, three phase diode with rectifier is there. Three phase diode with rectifier is there. And this is one, this is second, and this is the third. Okay, we have got that this voltage. Uh, this current is 535, 535 ampere, right? And there is a current source made, which is a very big inductor, assuming that this inductor is and is having uh, no ripple almost. And then you have got uh, through a uh, through uh, the firing angle control some voltage uh, you have got here VI, DC voltage you have got here VI. So that voltage is reflected here as VD of same DC magnitude because the inductor doesn't uh, drop any DC voltage. So VI is equal to VD and this VD uh, is such, I want to know what is the VD, is such that the line to neutral voltage, that means the voltage that I have injected in the rotor circuit, rotor circuit is how, conceptually what is, what is the rotor circuit? It is a resistance, original resistance R2, R2, R2 by uh, original resistance R2 by S now, right? And then as if, uh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, then X2, then X2, then X2, and think that this is the voltage we are injecting. This is the voltage we have injected. There is a uh, uh, neutral point. Um, so this is the voltage we have injected and let us say this is the neutral point. Uh, okay, now this is the, this is the rotor point, rotor phase, let us say R phase of the rotor, right? And then this voltage is uh, injected here, uh, right, uh, right. Uh, this voltage is injected here. This is the AC voltage that we are injecting. Right. Uh, right. I just want to say uh, the voltage. Now I am just making a little. Uh, I will make a little different. Uh, let us say I, I inject a voltage between you may think that between this is the point and a neutral, there is the machine neutral is there. This is the neutral of the machine. So between this, the voltage is inducted. Actually, right. So this is the, your, your injection point is this, this, okay? And it is such that it is injecting a voltage here, right? With this voltage is plus minus, and this voltage is uh, uh, equivalent to, uh, this is the voltage, this is the voltage, 39.4 volt voltage it is injecting. This is the current I2, which is unchanged, which is, uh, which is equal to I2 magnitude is equal to 535 ampere, that is the current. And this is the neutral, machine neutral, with respect to which we are injecting a voltage of 39.4 uh, volt. <coughs> How that voltage is coming? It is coming actually due to the VD. Due to the VD, it is actually getting the way um, a diode rectifier in our conventional thing, a three-phase supply uh, produces a diode rectifier, uh, uh, rectified voltage of VD. So this as if the three phase voltage that we are seeing is 39.4 volt, okay? And <coughs> then uh, that uh, translates into the DC voltage VD. In real life, actually it is the reverse way you are doing. We are first creating VI and the VI becoming equal to VD is equivalently injecting a voltage of 39.4 volt AC into the, into the motor side. That is what uh, into the rotor of the uh, this un rotor machine. I hope you get it. I, I hope you understand the point, right? So uh, uh, this voltage is the 
don't misunderstand this i am just saying this is the magnitude of the voltage uh, if i want to know the sinusoidal equivalent is the magnitude of the voltage there is no other injection injection wise it has already happened due to vd through the diode rectifier the rotor terminal voltage is it is a measurement quantity if i may, if i connect a voltmeter i will see that the voltage reading of that thing is 39.4 volt there is no separate injection injection is this equivalent of that is injection okay uh, uh, equivalent of the diode connection is the injected voltage on the rotor side and the measurement is with respect to the motors neutral point right so uh, uh, so what is that what is that next we had supposed to do you are now next supposed to do the calculate the the vd value what should be the vd value right so what we can think of is that whatever power that we are extracting from the rotor side right how much power we are extracting from the rotor side we are extracting a power of per phase wise 39.4 volts into 535 ampere and this has not changed the power factor at all because we are not changing the effective r by s ratio we are moving changing slip we are changing the summed up resistance but we are not changing the value of r by s ratio as we had got when it was in operating uh, under rated slip and full load torque so there is no change so therefore cos phi is again cos 14 degree this is the power phase and if we want to do this is the three phase so that must be the power extracted total power this is three represents the three phase this is the power phase voltage this is the current in the rotor circuit and this is the power factor so how much is it this must be the power that the rotor circuit is extracting and sending back to the grid so so this is 3 into 39.4 into 535 into cos 14 so it is i am getting 61 358 watt this amount of power is now sent back, right? It must be assuming the diode drops and ignoring all other drops. It must be equal to VD into ID. VD into ID then must be reflecting this thing is equal to, must be equal to 61358 watt. Now, how do I know ID? What is ID? ID is such that ID, what is the shape of ID? ID is a DC quantity. ID is here a DC quantity. But the current that is reflected in the rotor side is 535 ampere, right? And it is a diode rectifier. So the shape of the current in the rotor side is quasi square wave. Shape of the current in rotor circuit is, is quasi square wave. Quasi square wave means every conduction is 120 degree. And the level of current is how much? Is ID. The ID is the level of the current. And the fundamental of the current is how much? fundamental of the current is given by this waveform which is the fundamental of the current and that fundamental of the current's rms value is how much 535 ampere right that is what has to match the fundamental we are doing fundamental analysis the id value is such that its fundamental quantity is 535 ampere it is originated from a dc current through a diode rectification process and diode rectification process is, is putting this constraint that the shape of the current in the rotor circuit is a uh, quasi square wave form. It cannot be a continuous and smooth square wave form. But our all analysis is based on sinusoidal quantities. So, therefore, we have to take the fundamental quantity of this quasi square wave form and equate it to the 535 ampere. Right. So what is the uh, sinusoidal quantity of this 4 IDC by pi that must be this and divided by since it is <coughs> a peak kind of thing this must be equal to 535 ampere divided by root 2 is makes it RMS so ID must be equal to 535 into pi into root 2 divided by 4. So how much is it? ID is equal to 535 into pi divided by 4 
into root over of 2. So it is 594 ampere. 594 ampere is the DC current developed here. Developed in this is the DC current, which is which will be used by the current source inverter to give it back to the line side. So there will be a current source inverter here. There will be a current source inverter here. Inverter means thyristor converter. These are the thyristor converter conceptually like three phases, which has every which will be having a firing angle alpha. And then what happens? This is DC side. They develop AC voltage. And that AC voltage will be given to the grid. Sometimes this is given through a transformer connection. This voltage is given and then it goes to the three phase supply, three phase supply originally from which it has come, uh, from which the stator also is being supplied. So here only difference is that here the current direction is this current is going back, back to the source, back to the three phase supply system. So, uh, so that's why you are saying it is slip power recovery. So amount of slip power we are recovering, this is the amount of slip power we are requiring. This is the uh, amount of slip power we recover when it is running at 1200 RPM. Uh, so ID is this much. So what will be the VD? So VD must be that power divided by ID. So 61358 divided by 594. So it is how much? Uh, 61358 divided by this. So it must be 103 ampere. 103, 103 volts, sorry. 103.25 volts. So again, let us simplify our understanding. So this is the uh, three phase source. I'm now drawing in the left hand side, uh, probably. Uh, 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 I probably no, I should not draw. Maybe I should draw this way. So if I take now concentrate on this, there is a current source here, current source here, which uh, is going to a going to a third state. See, look at the uh, direction of the thyristor because the current has to return back to the source so uh, this is uh, this is the this one and these are the three outputs right three outputs of that three outputs maybe r phase y phase and b phase this is the current source inverter and this is the these are the three uh, after firing all of them uh, you again i remind you that thyristor is a very suitable thing for here because uh, it requires, as a device it is suitable, because uh, the, the operation is such that uh, in the off state, the thyristor uh, should see negative voltage. Hmm. Uh, this current source inverter uh, during off state, uh, the th uh, thyristor would see a negative voltage. Uh, but IGBT and MOSFET uh, in the off state cannot withstand negative voltage. So IGBT and MOSFETs are not good devices for this. Only thyristor is a good device for this. If you want to use IGBT or MOSFET, you have to add a series diode with it. Then only it will become suitable. But thyristors has another problem which we have to handle, but which is possible to handle because the uh, thyristor, uh, in order to turn off, uh, you cannot turn it off from the gate circuit. So how do you turn off? You turn off by firing another thyristor. That means if this is a thyristor one, in order to turn off the thyristor one, what you have to turn on is thyristor, uh, thyristor three, let us say thyristor three, the another phase thyristor you have to turn on. So then the whatever the current ID was initially going through the thyristor one, it might have been going through this and going to the load, uh, going not to the load, uh, to the supply system. This is the finally RYB supply system. Uh, it was going there. Uh, now will be uh, coming through. Um, R phase will turn off. R phase there won't be any current. But the current in the inductor will be continuous because the current this now thyristor three will take the uh, take the current. It will divert the current through uh, thyristor three. Uh, and anyway, the grid will uh, only two uh, one top device and one bottom device is uh, conducting in the grid. Uh, so there is no uh, as such no issue 
here that so many devices have to conduct it is not like that because if they conduct then they become short r and y become short so, so there is no time uh, more than one device is conducting in the top uh, leg uh, and uh, and one more than uh, more than one device is conducting at the bottom leg okay there are three legs only one top device and one bottom device would conduct so uh, so what i was trying to say is that the thyristors uh, has a uh, additional problem that you cannot turn it off uh, through gate uh, which you could have done for igbt and for mosfet uh, so what we do is that we have to in order to turn it off we we uh, we need the thyristor uh, not only to shift the current to another conducting thyristor but just after turn off it should see that the voltage across it is uh, voltage across it is negative so in order to do that what we have to do is we have to fire the thyristor in such a way the, the that the current is leading leading the voltage that means the current if i take fundamental analysis of the current uh, ir current and i if i see the current uh, the voltage vr n n being the neutral point uh, then the relationship between these two currents voltage and current vrn and v this has to be in the <clears throat> has to be leading if that becomes leading then we see that when it turns off uh, the voltage that appears across the thyristor th1 uh, would be negative that is what we see so this is why uh, we have to do uh, leading power factor uh, operate at the leading power factor these current source inverters using thyristors we have to operate at the leading power this is a very very important thing we will be remembering you should be remembering it should be uh, remembering when the power direction because it is a uh, it is just a dual of the thing huh? it is a dual of the thing in the in the uh, in the uh, rectifier mode we uh, we would like to have a lagging power factor uh, but when it is in the uh, inverter mode inverter and rectifier mode are all defined by the direction of the power flow in the rectifier mode conventional rectifier mode power flow happens from ac side to dc side in inverter mode power flow happens from uh, dc side to ac side and in the dc side to ac side this constant is important and coming here uh, that the thyristor uh, should see a leading power factor operation thyristor the power factor operation should be in the leading um, way uh, right so uh, so here also therefore the firing angle that we have to uh, use is is supposed to be a leading firing angle now how do we get uh, 103.25 volt uh, at the dc bus level here only we are generating this 103 this is vd this is vd is equal to vi so let us say vi vi is nothing but vd so firing angle this thing is producing and this thing now <clears throat> what is vry V Y B and V A B N. It could have been a little scaled by using a transformer, but we have not used a transformer because we have said that n is equal to n two is equal to one. When we have said n two is equal to one, we are saying that V R Y uh, is equal to here also it is 415 volt line to line. So this is what we are V R Y V Y B and this thing. Uh, and we know the relationship between uh vi and vry uh, in a three phase um, uh, thyristor control bridge three phase bridge we know the relationship the relationship doesn't depend on the direction of current it is depends on the on the conduction duration because that is what uh, will decide uh, the linkage between uh, the line to line ac voltage and the uh, dc bus dc voltage that is what will est establish the relationship so and that relationship we already know so what is the relationship 415 volt into uh, 1.35 uh, into cos alpha that must be equal to 103.25 volts right uh, this is the relationship between this so cos alpha will be how much cos alpha will be <coughs> 0.25 divided by 415 cos alpha is 
184. So alpha is equal to shift. Seventy nine point four D. Seventy nine point four D. That is the uh, uh, that is the uh, firing angle alpha that we have to use and <clears throat> and it is leading it must be leading it cannot be lagging lagging will not create problem for uh, commutation so this angle must be leading it cannot be lagging angle <clears throat> so um, the the phasor diagram if i draw of this circuit this is the basic phase voltage so I, I refer this as stator voltage. You understand that I'm only drawing with phase, but that means it is 239.6 voltage. 0.6 volt. 239.6 volt. And already from the stator, the current that is entering the stator is already 535. And we also know the uh, power factor angle that is uh, 14 degrees. So let us draw that one. <coughs> if the stator power has gone, it is it is taking always this current and this power factor is unchanged in this slip power recovery as far as the stator is concerned right just stator is unchanged and this current is 535 ampere right its magnitude is that and angle is minus 14 degree so this angle is 14 degree that is the uh, stator side of the, the <coughs> That is the status side operation and rotor side operation we have just now decided that what is the rotor side operation um, rotor side um, rotor side operation is that the rotor voltage as such the rotor voltage is 39.6 volt but in the phasor diagram what is happening 39.6 volt is not directly linked to the uh, it is not directly linked to the supply system. This is the supply system. Supply system voltage is again equal to the stator voltage. The firing angle has linked the rotor voltage to the uh, to the stator voltage. That means rotor side voltage is 39.6 per phase. But um, uh, after firing angle, after getting converted into DC and from DC to AC, it this voltage is still uh, uh, still refer to uh, if I if I'm uh, drawing if, if I'm interested in drawing the current here I'm just interested in drawing because this is what is returning back to them I should give a name to it uh, I should give a name to it let me let me look let me let me not confuse you and give a name to it I am giving a name to it is that um, uh, first name I give it as uh, why do I write first name you just will be understanding this red one I am giving the name as this name is I TXR that is transformer uh, I transformer uh, I will say which side I transformer uh, um, inverter side I transformer I N P that means I transformer inverter side right after that there is a transformer uh, coil and that coil uh, in this case is the number of transformer trans coil and that coil is same so that current i will refer it as uh, so 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 let me let me show it conceptually so conceptually i will show you that this is the transformer this is this current that is returning is i am conceptually telling i txr grid grid and this current is I am telling I T X R uh, inverter and in this case uh, N2 N2 is equal to 1. So if these two magnitude wise they are same and uh, this voltage also they are same this voltage I, if I conceptually think it with respect to a neutral this voltage is nothing but 415 by root 3 this voltage right which is 239.6 volt and this voltage also another with respect to the neutral this voltage is also this voltage also is same 415 by root 3 otherwise it will be in a generic manner it will be this 415 by 
into N2. And in a generic manner, this current will be, I grid will be, <coughs> I grid will be N2 into uh, ITXR grid, ITXR inverter, I transformer inverter. That is the generic nature of the thing. In this case, specific case N2 is equal to 1, so they all become equal. So let us not confuse ourselves with uh, these voltages, these voltages are grid voltage and the transformer scale voltage. They are nothing to do with, and they have to do something to do it, but they are linked to the rotor, side, rotor voltage, the machine's rotor voltage by the firing angle alpha. The firing angle alpha is converting this voltage into an equivalent voltage of 39 point this thing, firing angle, and then a diode rectifier. Firing angle alpha is converting it to an equivalent DC voltage which we saw that it has to be 103 volt and that 103 volt will inject a, a, an AC voltage of 39 point this uh, per phase, right? So let us draw then the current. So the current, but the current is not getting transferred at all. Current magnitude is not getting scaled at all. Not getting scaled at all. Why? Because N2 is equal to 1. So the current magnitude here is, I have seen that 39.4. Uh, is the current magnitude <clears throat> uh, because you, I told you now the DC DC equivalent magnitude is 594. That DC equivalent magnitude, when again it has become a <clears throat> due to the firing this thing, it is also a step to a form. This way from ITX inverter is actually a step to a step to a form. This is the shape of the step to a form whose magnitude will again be fundamental magnitude will again be like this, right? So this fundamental magnitude, since it is this level, is 595, this fundamental magnitude will again be 535, uh, 35 into root 2. Uh, RMS value is 535. So, so this is the way, uh, <coughs> way uh, current magnitude is remaining unchanged, right? So this thing I will draw here, 535 at 79 point. Five hundred thirty five ampere, and the angle here is as we have seen leading. You check that we are digging. This is the reference. This is the voltage reference. We check that we are doing leading thing because it will help us in uh, it will help us in uh, commutation of the thyristor bridges, thyristor uh, thyristor devices. Commutation it will help, and therefore we are changing. So what is the total current? Total current is this current minus this current. This is what? This current will be I uh, TXR grid. This is the I TXR grid current. So IS minus I TXR grid is equal to I total. The current, effective current, total current, total current uh, in the sense that these two are going to the same node. Uh, this IS and I TXR are connected to the same node, same phase. So therefore in the system, if I take the system of the slip power recovery, the effective current that goes is here is the negative of that. So negative of that, I will do this way. Right? And then add them. And then add them. Right, and um, this calculation, if I do, so that this is what is the I total from the grid is nothing but 535 minus 14 degree uh, and minus 535 at an angle uh, plus 79. Point four degree. So if I calculate both of them, uh, if I calculate, I get a number. Uh, how much? <coughs> I get a number. Seven. Seven seventy eight minus fifty seven degrees. <laughs> so you see that the current has actually increased but it has, has a very bad power factor. It's a very bad power factor it is going. So the 
effective current <coughs> will be increasing you can also see that the uh, converter rating wise converter is uh, obviously it's a low voltage device but um, it will be um, it will have a quite a big current in that quite a big current in that in that and it is in this situation it is recovering a power of about 60 how much 60 something 60 kilowatt about 60 61 kilowatt power it is recovering <coughs> but when you will be operating at 500 rpm so 500 rpm what will be the situation 500 rpm let us take the 500 that time the r external 3 uh, plus 0 0.013 by uh, that slip slip will be how much that slip s3 is equal to uh, uh, thousand thousand by uh, 1500 uh, right so it is two third slip is equal to two third uh, slip is equal to two third is equal to uh, 0 0.013 by uh, uh, divided by 0 0.03. So, how much is it? Let me check. 0 0.013 divided by 0 0.03 uh, into 2 divided by 3 minus 0 0.013. <coughs> so, our external 3, external 3 is coming out to be 0 0.276 ohm so the voltage injection per phase will be v external 3 will be how much this uh, 0 0.276 into 535 volts so 535 volts is how much 35 is equal to 147. 6 volts right 147.6 volts uh, i have to generate from uh, um, right so uh, the power will be uh, the external this thing um, so power is this voltage into 535 into uh, cos 14 into 3 yeah so p uh, p recovered that power has to be <coughs> one uh, 200 let me say uh, approximately 230 uh, two, uh, no, let me write it 229862 watt right so v <coughs> vdc vd that that time has to be uh, this uh, divided by 595 uh, that was the dc current right 594 594 so 229862 by 594 so this would be uh, divided by 594 so this is the 387 volt this is 387 volts. So what will be the cos alpha? So the cos alpha is, so it was how much? 1.35 into 415 cos alpha dash, alpha three, let me say, is equal to, uh, is equal to 387 volt, 387 volt. So 387 divided by 1.35, divided by 4115 uh, in inverse cos yeah so here alpha 3 is equal to <coughs> 46. so in this situation the phasor diagram would look like this <coughs> this is the voltage original current is this and this is now 46 degree magnitude is same so it is coming and it will be like this so this time the magnitude will be 
I guess will be and I not I guess it will be uh, less, not so much. Let me do a little better parallel. You see that effective power is reducing. Effective power is this. This is the I T X R. Uh, this is I T X R. T X R grid. It has increased because of 45 degree power factor. 45, approximately 46.3 degree. So it has increased. More power is required, right? And less power is now input from the system. And this is original IS. This is original VS. Uh, so substator voltage. And this is the negative of ITXR grid. And this is I total. I total. Total. So this is how it will be. It will be functioning in this system. Okay. So I will stop here. And any question is there, please ask me. Uh, whenever you feel like.